Welcome back, Harbor Hawks Nation. Here we are again for another parking lot preview. Beautiful day, Sunday, July 21st. I'm Mike Maynard alongside Matt Coates. Back again for another Harbor Hawks matchup tonight. Matt taking on the Bourne Braves in a battle of the West Division. Mm -hmm. Third seed, fourth seed. Should be a good matchup tonight, huh? Yeah, we saw the Bourne Braves last year in the Western Division playoffs. We know them as a formidable foe. And, Mike, even though when you look at their record, 12, 15, and 2, you might think they're struggling. They're not struggling against us. They're we are 0-2-1 and one against the Bourne Braves. It's been a tough start against the Bourne Braves. You mentioned it. 12-15-2 for Bourne. 17-11-1 for Hyannis. You would think mm -hmm. that that means Hyannis has probably won at least one, but mm -hmm. no. No yeah. win so far against the Braves through three games. And even with the home game, yep. tough. You would think. The Harbor Hawks have been really good at home, but one of those few losses, I think it's two losses Yes, in the one season. of our two losses at home. Wow, one of those two, two Bourne. So Bourne has really had our number this year. Hopefully can turn things around tonight, but right now they're the only team in the league that the Harbor Hawks have not beaten yet, and we are over halfway through the season, about to hit the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. It's pretty unbelievable. Last matchup was Friday, July 12th at Doran Park. Yep. Six to nothing loss. Mm -hmm. Matt, it's really going to be something that the Harbor Hawks need to keep in mind. we got to turn things around. This is a big game, a road game as well. The Harbor Hawks have not been great on the road. A road game against a tough, formidable opponent who's really had our number. It's going to be a really important matchup tonight. You're right, Mike. It's going to be a very important matchup. Hey, we're two and one against them. There's no time like the present, Mike. There's no better time to hit your first win against Bourne than there is tonight. I'm sure the guys are thinking that, and I'm sure Mitch Carriger is employing that on his team. 100. percent And I mentioned it: six to nothing loss last time against Bourne, but a six to nothing win last night against Harwich, Matt. Mm -hmm. What was going right for the Harbaugh's in last night's game? Literally everything. Everything. We talked to Mitch Carriger two straight games at home. Two straight six nothing victories. When you look at that, you see the pitching staff is dealing nineteen scoreless innings. I mean, that's just phenomenal. Unbelievable. Twelve nothing victory over two straight games. If you combine the totals, I mean, offense is clicking, defense is being amazing. Blaine Wink pitched last night, and he's a guy who pitches to soft contact. I believe he had two to three double plays maybe last night. I'm not exactly sure on that one, but we definitely kept the ball on the ground. Blaine Wink trusting his defense, and they showed out for him in the batter's box. Eric Snow, he made it snow in July, Christmas in July here at McKeon Park. Three kill ones. You did call that last night. I do want to mention, I have to give you props. Last Yesterday on the parking lot preview, my buddy Matt Coates here called it. He called Eric Snow would make it snow in July, and boy, oh boy, did he. Mm -hmm. Big home run, two-run homer early in the game. Got things going for the Harbor Hawks offense, and then continued. That got another hit later on, so big game for Eric Snow. You mentioned it, the pitching staff, another shutout. I mean, that's... Unbelievable. Two, mm -hmm. two shutouts in a row is unprecedented in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Blaine Wink, you mentioned four and a third inning scoreless. Had a great start. Everybody, though, in this pitching staff has been pitching great as of late. Hoping to continue it again tonight. But, again, this Harbor Hogs lineup up and down. Everybody's producing. Mm -hmm. Eric Snow, but everybody, really, is having a great uh, time at the plate right now. And, again, this Bourne Braves team is a good one. It's going to be important for them to keep things going tonight. But for Bourne, for Bourne last night, they didn't have as much luck. Mm -mm. A ten to five loss to Wareham last night, Matt. What happened in last night's game for them? Yeah, you see that ten five loss to the Wareham Gatemen. And I mean these Gatemen, such a formidable opponent. They're first in the West for a reason, Mike, and they have been for quite some time. So when you look at that game, you see first and foremost three errors in the field for the Braves. Not a winning recipe in the Cape Cod Baseball League with so many talented players. Six different Gatemen with two or more hits at the plate. Well rounded effort for Wareham last night. And a tough effort for Bourne on the defensive end. You put those two things together, Wareham's going to come out on top every time. 100%. Wareham a great team. The Harbor Hawks are a great team. Maybe we'll see something again like that tonight. Who knows? But three yards in the field, definitely something that Bourne's going to look to clean up. And then a lot of base runners last night. Again, nothing you can really do about that besides better pitching. Mm -hmm. And fielding, though. Errors really not helping. But overall, walking a lot of guys. But we mentioned it, multiple guys with multiple hits last night. Yep. At least someone went four for five in the leadoff spot, three for three somewhere else. There was a lot of hits going around for Wareham last night that Bourne was surrendering. So big game for Wareham and a, a game that Bourne definitely wants to flush and move on to tonight. A big part of that is going to be the pitching matchup, Matthew. Mm -hmm. We're going to hop into it. A new pitcher on the mound for the Harbor Hawks. Tell me about Zay Gutierrez. Yeah, Mike, Zay Gutierrez, he's no stranger to winning. Goes to Angelo State, Division II school, who's the national runner-ups this year in the Division II ranks. So hopefully he can bring a little winning mindset to these Hawks. 
he doesn't want to be a runner up, not a bus girl. Hopefully he can get back to that championship with them. But when we look at his numbers, 81.2 or 81 and two thirds innings pitched, 16 appearances, 15 starts. Right there, I don't even need to look at his numbers. I know this guy has a routine. He's not used to coming out of the pen. He's used to getting these starts. So when you see that, making your first Cape League appearance is always an issue. But when you have that comfortability, knowing how what it takes to be a starter, that gives me confidence in a new player tonight, Mike. 100%. You mentioned it. A lot of experience. 81 and two-thirds innings pitched this past year. That's a lot. He's mm -hmm. got that ability to pitch at a high level. You mentioned it. His team wins a lot. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Love wins for the Harbor Hawks here. But we, we dive deeper into his stats. A 4.52 ERA. Pretty good. 74 strikeouts. 40 walks this past spring. First game, though, on Cape. I got a bug on my arm. First uh -oh. game on Cape, though. Should be interesting. Hopefully he comes out and has a great game tonight. You mentioned he's used to starting, has that preparation down pat. He should be good to go, and it should be a good matchup. But the other side of things, we have to talk about it. Born, J.D. Thompson, six-foot left-handed pitcher from Vanderbilt. Another guy with a lot of experience so far. 52 innings pitched, 14 appearances, 12 starts at Vandy. Just over a four ERA, 74 strikeouts in 52 innings. That is a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lot of strikeouts, only 18 walks as well. On Cape, though, Matt, what's he been doing so far? I believe he has nine innings pitched so far on Cape. How's his stats looking so far this like, summer? First and foremost, I don't know what it is. I don't think these Vandy boys like us. I feel yeah. like every other game we're facing a starting pitcher from Vanderbilt. So I don't know what's going on over there down in the SEC, but we might need to figure this out because these Vandy boys, they're firing at us. But like you said, his stats on Cape, nine innings pitched, four appearances with one start, 3.0 ERA, 14 strikeouts with only two walks. It's a guy who's going to pound the zone. He's not afraid to go after hitters. And in his limited experience so far, he's been successful. So I expect tonight, knowing this Harbor Hawks lineup likes to walk and take the free base, he's going to be firing in first pitch strikes and look to make our offense get hits. 100%. I think it's going to be an interesting matchup. A lot of strikeouts for J.D. Thompson. And this Harbor Hawks lineup doesn't like to strike out that much. Nope. So a lot of fouling off pitches. I'm, I'm assuming he's going to fill the zone up a lot. It should be really an interesting matchup. We mentioned it a couple times recently. We've had some good pitchers on the mound against the Harbor Hawks. Yep. And it really has proved to be very entertaining to watch. So another entertaining, hopefully, game tonight. Good pitching matchup. Two guys that have a lot of experience. But one has a little bit more on Cape than the other. So it should be interesting. We'll see how it plays out. Hopefully it plays out good for the Harbor Hawks tonight. But we got to move on to our player of the game picks. Matt, I haven't really thought of one. I'm not going to lie to you. So if you're ready, I am, and I'll I'm going to do go. something unprecedented, at oh, least boy. for myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to back. Wow. I'm going to pick a player I picked last night, and I'm going to pick him again today. And may, you can think it's because he hit a homer on Christmas in July. You can think it's because he makes it snow in July, but it's not. I actually saw him getting a sandwich just about 30 minutes ago, and I had a great sandwich. So that means Eric Snow is going to have a great sandwich means he's going to be happy, he's going to be fueled, and he's going to be ready to go at Thorn Park tonight. So give me Eric Snow for the second night in a row to be the player of a game. Wow, that's a bar right there. Love it. Love the enthusiasm. Eric Snow, hopefully you enjoyed your sandwich today. Hopefully that proves to be something in, when it comes to baseball. Anyways, so I'm going to go with a different infielder. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a man from Florida State that we picked a lot as of late. As we have the bus driver. Bus time. Hopefully you can still hear us. We don't know if we can. Love the bus drive by to pick up the players. One of those players is going to be Alex Lodis. I think Alex Lodis is in for a big game tonight. He's been cooling off a little bit. Again, we mentioned it before. He started out really, really hot. Red hot. You couldn't have asked for a hot, hotter start mm -hmm. to a summer. But cooled down a little bit. But I think he's going to back up a little bit. Back up now. He'll be uh, right back on track. I think he's going to have a big game tonight against J.D. Thompson. Left-handed pitcher against right-handed bat. I like that matchup you as well. You love that. He's been playing great defense in the field. So I like Alex Lodis to have a big game. Eric Snow. Hopefully he has a big game too. Hopefully that sandwich proves to be something <laughs> beneficial. But we got to do our scoring prediction to wrap things up, Matthew. Uh -huh. What do we got for you, Mike? I, I I saved this in the tank today. I have a little Matalytics today for my wow. score prediction. That's got to be a copyright issue. It's, that's a copyright issue. it's all right. Josh owes me one, so it's okay. Okay. Every single time we played Bourne, Mike, they've put up six runs. Six nothing wow. loss. Six two loss. Six six tie. So tonight, unfortunately. We're going to concede six runs. But those bats, man, bats have been hot. 9-6 Harbor Hawks. Okay. I like that. I'm going to go off of that and say, Oren's going to score five tonight. We're going to have an unprecedented game tonight. Five runs for the Bourne Braves, seven for the Harbor Hawks. I think it's a close game. Harbor Hawks come out on top. Seven to five Harbor Hawks. Book it. Go to the Oren Park. Check it out. 
We appreciate you for watching. Thank you, Matt, for being here as always. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe down below. Go on down to Dorn Park if you can. If you can't, check out the broadcast right here on your screen. We'll be here on the Hub Rocks Baseball Network. Not we, but Jacob Irons, Nico Sharp, Josh Schreiber, and this guy will do some sideline reports here and there. I'll be on the side riding. But thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you as always. We'll see you later. Go, Go Hawks. Hawks.